All right. I am excited and in the dark here, but uh, I am just passionately excited that for 12 months we have, uh, have set our course and set our sights on becoming and accepting the Hero Challenge. And I believe inside of each one of us are gifts and talents that God has given us to, to become the heroes that he wants us to be within our workplace, within our communities, within our neighborhoods, within our families, with our spouses. God has created us to be heroes and to live the life beyond our wildest imagination that he wants for us. Now, I don't know how many of you guys, uh, when you were younger and you started off in like English class, you had to do a project that was called brainstorming or a brain burst, or a mind map. I don't know if anybody did this when you were writing creative stories, anybody at all, and you had to draw a little cloud around a word, and you basically had to kind of draw some lines out from those and come up with a story based on essentially how your brain functions and how it fires. And this morning, I actually just want to take a few minutes because something that just stirs in my heart, and for those of you who probably... um, have listened to my messages. I'll just tell you the way that God tends to work in my life. I'm a bivocational pastor, meaning I have a job full-time as well as what we do here on Sundays. And and so I've always been, been just focused on the fact that if something is not real to me, if, if, if I can't preach out of the overflow of my life, then it really isn't going to be real to you. And so I have to mine that on a day-to-day basis, and I have to actually take each week, and I have to feed myself, and I have to stir my heart, and I have to listen intently for what God is saying to me. And the fact of the responsibility that I have as a pastor puts me in a great position, because each week I have to come and I have to have something, or you won't be excited, right? And realistically, though, the same is true of every single one of us. It just, just the responsibility of being here to share. But in reality, you are the pastor of your own life. You are the leader of your life. You are the leader of your home. You are the leader of, your, of children. You're, you're leaders in the workplace where God has put you. And so really, it's not just me that, that should be preparing their hearts. It should also be you. And one of the things that, that I noticed and was thinking about this week of how easy it is for us to get into a position, as we were talking about earlier, where, where fear and, and just a lockdown starts to grip us, where we start to sort of have some future thinking, and it, and it takes us outside of the present moment, because then we start to look at what in the world am I going to do? This situation is occurring right now. This thing just happened. And I want to be excited about that thing that just happened, but I can't because uh, this now is happening and these things have to happen. Are you with me? I don't have to interpret them because you all know what I'm talking about, even though I'm not saying anything. We all have situations and things that come up. And as I was just sitting in my car driving on, to the, on the way to work, and I, and I began to just ponder some of those, and I began to sort of feel the creep of the way that the enemy, because he is a creep, he comes in and he creeps in and he, he tries to just get us on lockdown. I was reminded of a passage of scripture that I think needs a lot of attention from us. And one, as we've talked about who we are in Christ Jesus, and we've begin to announce to ourselves and to begin to verbalize that this is the reality of who we are contained in these pages, that we are everything that God says we are. We're more than conquerors. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. But listen to this in 1 Corinthians 2.16. It says this. We have the mind of Christ. <laughs> now I know at first glance you might not be blown away by it. But this morning I want to take a little bit of time to just look at that. And for us to, in our hearts, to begin to surrender to the reality that we have the mind of Christ. And for us to just take a few minutes because we've been hooking our trailer, or the trailer that we've been hitched to, excuse me, is one that has diffused and locked us and put the bars down on the God that lives on the inside of us and kept us in narrow-minded, short-sighted fear. But God's given us a tool, and he's given us the very mind of Christ to allow us to put our energy and effort 
into realizing the life beyond our wildest imagination that he has given to us. Now, having the mind of Christ means a few things. And for me, as I, as I began to just think about it, I began to look at circumstances and situations that I had sort of just put an end to, because this is what we often do. When one sort of door closes, we sort of just stare at that door and we just think, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. This door has closed. What will happen? There's no money. There's no job. There's no situation. I have no education. I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And we spend our time in our own mind looking at the door before us that's closed, and we give our attention and our energy to it. And if I'm lying, let me know. But I would venture out to say that all of us have uh, and can reflect on what it's like to just stare at that shut door and just look at it. And then all of a sudden our face and our emotions and our body language, they start to tell a story to the people around us. And that story is that God is not resurrected. He is not alive. I do not have the mind of Christ. In fact, I am in the grip of fear, and I don't know what the H-E-C-K I am going to do. Gotcha. Right? Ever been there? And as I began to look at this scripture, and I began to meditate on it and go, you know what? I do. I have the mind of Christ. I mean, the mind of Christ as Jesus walked this earth and we've studied his personality and his character and we've studied what he did as he looked out on hurting and broken people in situations that seemed impossible and in and, and times when people who were, who were infirmed, the man with the withered hand or broken down after 38 years, the woman who, 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 uh, who basically had, had consulted every doctor, had been to every position, Jesus' very mind and capacity was that all things are possible to him who believes. And he's afforded us the opportunity to connect ourselves and, and de-hitch from, from the, the focus and the narrow-mindedness so that we could re-hitch with the very mind that he has that all things are possible to him who believes. And as we set our, our tones and our imaginations and we put our mind in tune with the mind of Christ, something creative begins to happen. All of a sudden, we stop looking at situations in such a small-minded way, but we start to entertain the possibility, what happens if this fails? And we start to look at all the possibilities that align themselves, that are available, because all things are possible to him who believes. So having the mind of Christ allows us a couple of things. It allows us to understand God's plan, to look around and to trust that it's not about us, but God came to restore and to redeem. He came to bring salvation to humanity. In the current circumstance and situations you're looking at that seem like they're shutting down, it might be because God is opening up a roadway and a path and, and, a, and a helicopter maneuver over the top that you can't see in your mind because you're not supposed to see that because God wants us to surrender to him and to trust him and to align ourselves with the mind of Christ because he has something way bigger than you can even imagine. Amen? And we, we have the right, we have the decision to not align ourselves with that thinking, not to put our energy and effort there, or we can spend our time, the energy and effort, looking at all the negative things and how's that working out for us? Right? And I, I can even imagine that sometimes because of how you know, we go about things that we just, we just get frozen. And when we get into that position where we're feeling that way and overcome, and somebody said this morning when you get into the funk, because uh, we've all been in it, you know, don't look at me, and those of you who have significant others can attest that your significant other gets into funks. And what is it? A funk is merely not being able to see beyond the circumstances, circumstances in the current situation. And so we don't allow the reality 
of the supernatural life of God that lives on the inside of us to actually flow to the situations that we need most for it to flow to because we can't see beyond what is right in front of us. So this morning, I want us to open up ourselves to the mind of Christ. I want us to first and foremost realize that having the mind of Christ means having the perspective of him, his perspective, one of humility and obedience, but one of supernatural favor and grace and mercy. That right now I know, because I get there too, you can't see past it, but you have to take your energy and effort and not put it into religious activity, but into ener- your, put your energy and effort into stirring yourself up into the creativity that God has placed in you so you can stop asking yourself, what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't come through? What if everything falls apart? And start asking yourself, what if it goes this way? What if God's trying to do this? What if this thing he's trying to to explode in my life? And what about the destiny and purpose that he has? Because God knows the mysteries. He knows the future. And he already declares that it's going to be good for you. Which means that you and I have to grab onto his perspective. uh, Philippians 2, 5 through 8. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearances as a man, he humbled himself. By becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Let's not get too religious with that passage of Scripture because there's some richness in it. Number one is Jesus had gifts and talents, but his gifts and talents were not about him. He made himself nothing. That doesn't mean that he had a mentality, I'm just a nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nobody, I'm nothing. No, it means that he emptied himself of his ambitions and his desires to make his life all about him. And he emptied it out and he surrendered and said, not not my will, but Father, your will. Which is a perspective for you and I with the gifts and talents that we've been given. With the things that we've experienced in our life. We can either think of it of ourselves with the giftings that we have a little bit too highly than we should and sometimes too lowly. But Jesus didn't do that. He emptied himself and thought of himself as nothing. In other words, well, I could say, well, I guess I don't have the education. I guess I don't have these breaks. I don't know that famous person. I I just, I, I don't have these things. Jesus didn't allow himself to go down that path. And he didn't also say, I am the son of God. I'm awesome. I am awesome. And go around letting everybody know, just, I'm just, I'm so cool because of, look, check out the gifts. I'm the son of God. Check me out. He didn't do that either. But he humbled himself and he was obedient to the, to the plan. He was obedient, recognizing that, that it wasn't his to sort of, sort of just put together in scotch tape, which would reflect how most of us sometimes live our lives, right? Scotch taping it together, hoping that we're going to be important and do something big. Something big has already happened for us. Jesus made us a child of God. And his desire for us to lose that roller coaster life lies in the reality that we are the children of God, that he is our Lord, he is our master, that we take our lives and we surrender them to him because he is the one that is leading. And so we trust our future. We trust whether or not we're going to be important. We trust whether or not we're going to be successful to him, not to ourselves. Man, I, I tell you what, having the mind of Christ in your finances is, is a very good thing. <laughs> I mean, being able to recognize that God, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and, and glory by Christ Jesus instead of by what I can produce. You, you can't produce enough. And, and if we don't humble ourselves and we're not obedient, what we do is we get lost, lost in the rat race of trying to earn. And, I, and I'll, I'll tell you where that leads you. Somebody will always be learning, earning more than you. 
And that will just be a dissatisfied, I mean, welcome to Scottsdale, right? And Aston Martin, the, the Lamborghini, the, you know, the huge truck that costs a half a million dollars, you just can't compete. So give up that. For, for, forget that for just a second. Now, does that mean that God can't bless you financially? He can't bless you in capacities? No. I mean, it's, it's up to us to let go of, of, of the lockdown that we've had so that God can supernaturally flow into every area of our life. That means that I, I stop getting so obsessed with my savings that I, that I forget that I'm called to be a generous person. I'm so busy trying to accumulate. You hear me, right? I mean, this is where the rhythm comes in. Is saving money bad? No. Do we all like Dave Ramsey around here? Of course we do. We love him. But let's not let that get in the way of the reality that God called us to be generous so that when we're our finances, God calls us to do something extravagant for somebody else and to give beyond what we can imagine that he's probably, that door that you see, if I give that, then how is anything else going to happen if I give to that situation or whatever it is? You know, I'm talking in ambiguities, but you start to let him flow. If God can get it, through me, he can get it to me. I know it's cliche, but the reality is, as you become a generous person with your life, and you start to give, and you start, stop seeing yourself as a person who's in need of a blessing. God, I need, I need, I need. And start seeing yourself as a person who blesses. That is having the mindset of Christ, right? That is humbling yourself. That, that, that today, right now, as you're sitting here thinking, you could be thinking, how am I going to take care of this? How am I going to take care of that? Or you could start to align yourself with the mindset of Christ and think, how can I bless somebody? What do I have in my possession right now that I could be a blessing to another person? Who could I take out to dinner? Who could I sit down and write a letter to and be an encouragement? God, I want to have your mindset. And everywhere you went, you were a blessing. Everywhere you went, miracles occurred. Well, how did it happen? Because Jesus had the mindset that you and I need to have that allows us to get outside of ourselves and into the supernatural realm of the abundant life that God called us to. Are you here? Because I am preaching pretty good. All right. I mean, seriously, like, this is where, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, uh, not even a kid, I guess I was in my uh, college, college years, and, you know, the Body for Life book came out, and the big marketing challenge that they had for whoever would take all the EA, EAS products and, you know, basically trim down and get cut up in 12 weeks. You know about it, right? Well, they used to give you a little ca cassette, all right? You guys know what those are? They go on, uh, anyway. And it was, uh, it was Bill Phillips, I think is his name or whatever, and, and he would, it was like the power mindset. And on there, you know, or, or for those of you who've lift, listened to Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins, you think I kind of look like him, but you've listened to like, live with passion. I mean, this book right here was, was the creation of all of that. To have the power mindset, you know, to just l look at this book and, and have have a sort of somber, boring, sort of, you know, monotonous tone, which is why it's very difficult for me to listen to sometimes, you know, the, the Bible on CD in the fourth day of the seventh year. I'm like, this is not working for me. And then I hear Tony Robbins, live with passion. I'm like, okay, we got something wrong here because these words are life. And the words that, that usually motivational speakers are using, the foundation of those words come from this book. And so as we start to step out, are you with me this morning? Something begins to take shape, but it requires humility and obedience. It requires us allowing ourselves to obey what God has said so that we can be free from ourselves and we can be free from the prison that we've put the life of God that lives on the inside of us in. Why aren't we seeing more? Why aren't we experiencing more? Why are situations because of that? Not because of something you did that was bad. Not because of a, of a, of a sin or whatever else that we, we tend to sort of, you know, exclaim from the pulpit that the reason why these things are happening is because there's sin in your life and the Holy Spirit's going through your car and your, you know, your used refrigerator and all this stuff. I've heard some nonsense in my life. That is not true. It's a lie. They're lying, liars. And what is true is the fact that your energy and effort 
has to go into having the mind of Christ, meditating on the word of the Lord, bringing attention to, writing down, verbalizing, declaring, letting your body get a hold of it. As we say, you know, these songs, these, these are declaration songs. And, and I know that it's easy to get into, okay, we're going to do some songs as we come into church, but we are singing with, with all of our heart. You know, we raise our white flag. I surrender. It is symbolic. We know what a white flag is. And as we allow ourselves to engage with worship that way, then the words become life. And our nonverbal communication, it's very important. I mean, as, as I've learned more, as I've grown more, I realize the statement that motion produces emotion is true. And sometimes, you know, I think I brought this up. I don't know if I ever brought it up in church. I was working for an evangelist at the time. We went to a church in Waco, Texas. And there was a woman who came up. She was kind of a biker woman, hadn't been in church very long. And so, you know, we had encouraged her. You know, I, I'm not sure what had all happened, but, you know, this may seem foreign to you, but we're just like, you know, curse, just curse the devil. You know, and, and so, you know, just like, you know, basically like say, you know, devil, you know, it's not about you, all this, but, but she took it literal and she just was like, devil, you mother of God, and just, and just went to town on cursing the devil. And I've thought about that a lot and gone, right on. Yeah, that's exactly what needs to happen. I know some of you, you, you know, maybe you've, you've let out an uh, a, a expletive at one point or another, but those expletives could do a lot more good and value being directed right at the devil and the schemes and the plans and the things rather than us getting mad at our spouses and our friends and all the stuff that he tries to ruin in our lives. I mean, sometimes you just got to give him the bird. You just got to. I mean, I'm not lying. I'm serious. I mean, I, I think it's a spiritual position to just be like, ah, uh, you know what I'm saying? Are you with me? Because that record and that voice that's continuing to play, you need to just tell it to get off you because you have the mind of Christ. And you're going to bring yourself in obedience to the supernatural life of Christ that lives on the inside of you, that all things are possible to him who believes. And God, I thank you that you're working things out and you're making a way and you're causing hearts to be stirred and things to happen and money to come to me in some way, form, or fashion and jobs to open up and things because I have the supernatural life of God that lives on the inside of me. I am a child of God. And God is working on, me, on my behalf, opening Doors. Compassion. Having the mind of Christ means having his compassion. Matthew 9, 36. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send our laborers into his harvest. Having the mindset of Christ means that at every moment we are in alignment with that purpose and plan that God had a mission which was to seek and to save that which was lost. And at every moment that we sort of get to a place and, I, and over the years I, I've done this where, where I've basically come home after taking missions trips and, and that same feeling I had and that same incredible excitement I had being you know, in a foreign country as an as a, as a elite, you know, you know, Jesus sniper, I guess, whatever, I don't know, whatever it is, just being sort of, you know, incognito. I remember, you know, like going in and writing on my, my customs forms, you know, I'm there as a tourist, but secretly, I'm there to preach the gospel to set the captives free, yeah, and I'm, you know, secret Jack Bauer stuff, you know, that's how you feel. And when I would get back, I would, I would be thinking to myself, oh, this is lame. Look at everybody just going through the motions, you know, missions. And God began to do a work in my heart. And he's, he's like, Brad, listen, today I want you to go into, I don't mean I heard an audible voice, all right? I just mean like I felt a stir in my heart. Brad, you know, all around you are, are, are the same people that I love, are the same people who, who, who can't, who need the, the message translated for them, or the same people, families who are broken and who are hurting, I want you to go to the children's hospital. I want, I want you to spend time in the ward there, and I want you to recognize that the same thing is here available to you at every moment. You just got to open your eyes, brother. And I'm like, all right. So I went down to the children's hospital, and I took a peek at the two-year-olds and the five-year-olds and the ten-year-olds who were stricken with cancer, who were hurting, whose families were there and listening to those stories. And what did I do? I just let my heart 
begin to allow compassion to stir. And man, I tell you what, compassion is a force. It's why it says that he was moved by it. Because the same mindset is in you to be able to look and not have sympathy because compassion by definition means to have an awareness of someone's suffering with the desire to alleviate it. Meaning that we operate as special ninjas, a ninja force for Jesus. Where we are not people who look around at the situations and circumstances and just go, oh my gosh, you know, I guess everything's going to, to hell in a handbasket. I mean, look at this administration, look at that administration. I mean, it's all going downhill. No. Compassion is the mindset that God has given a, into us. And the title of my message, I'm a little late in giving it, but is, I mean, are you out of your mind? Yeah. Yeah, that's where we need to be, out of our flipping minds and into his mind so that we can begin to experience the very best. Romans 12, 2, you probably heard it your entire life if you've been in church. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, so transformation, you want it? Anybody in here frustrated that, that they're not seeing more transformation? I mean, I've, I've had a hundred times in my life, I've heard people in church, because I've been, been in, in, in large churches, small churches, or whatever, and people, you know, banging, you know, the, the, the gong of, you know, we're just not seeing any transformation. Well, you, you want to know why? It's pretty simple, and it's right there. You get transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, to be able to, as we talked about, going from the worm and the, or the caterpillar into the butterfly requires taking the, the thing between your two ears and giving attention to the reality of who you are in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? And that, if, if we truly desire to see transformation in our church, it starts by us renewing our mind. Renewing our mind to God's purpose. Renewing our mind to God's position and posture, renewing our mind to God's perspective. I mean, right now, what perspective have you been taking? What position in the current circumstances of your life have you been taking? Did I just step on your toes? Because I stepped on mine too. You know, I mean, where, where have you been putting the energy and effort? And and, and now that you're, that you're thinking about that question as we all enter this together as a family, how tired are you and, and how exhausted are you from the position that you have been going over in your mind? I mean, are you pretty tired? I mean, isn't, isn't it annoying? And, and if we as the church and as we, if we as the people that God has called to bring about his kingdom, if we're not smart enough, if we don't gain the perspective enough, we, we don't realize that what the enemy is doing is trying to erode our foundations so that we will not live with purpose. And, and he's trying to get you so bogged down and so distracted as we were singing there so that you'll stop recognizing that you contain the compassion of Jesus to make all things possible in other people's lives. Now, we talked a little bit about how do we get, how do we get out of that? How, how do we start? And I said that, you know, earlier you could start by starting to think right now, who can I be a blessing to? But actually, I think one of the tools that God's given us actually goes back to that English class that we just took. And where we, we would brainstorm and we would mind map. And I've learned, I've learned something over time, a very natural step that I, that I can take in being able to align myself with the Word of God, align myself with the mind of Christ. And that is to take the current situation and circumstances, and it could be, could be your future. That could be one of the things that you're thinking about. How am I going to get, how is this going to happen? And, and you draw a little, a little you know, special cloud, a little girly, fluffy cloud around it, and you begin to allow the mind of Christ that God's given to you to think through it. I mean, realistically, let's be honest. Some of us that, you know, maybe it's the job situation. Let's just open up our hearts to what can God do? Well, there's a million things. How do I know? Because I have traveled all over the world and people do the most ridiculous things and earn money. I mean, my brother right now has probably absorbed more Storage Wars shows and more barter shows than anybody humanly possible. But I'm going to tell you what, 
as a result, that creativity is kicking in, and him and Jessica are ridiculous on finding deals out at garage sales and other places. Now, am I saying that, well, Jesus came so that we could, we could do storage wars? No, but, but doing that actually could be a creative way that God is going to use. Many years ago, I told you the way that I got out of debt was by eBay. Now, is eBay a, a, the Greek word for Holy Spirit? No, no. And somebody else might go, well, I tried eBay, and it just, it's terrible. I hate it. I, I don't care. The Lord used eBay at a time when I was asking him, God, show me a supernatural way that I can, and, and, and something that, that I, I don't currently see, and he used it. He's used other things, and it's too ridiculous to mention, right? People buy gold and silver. People buy trash and turn it into treasure. People shoot videos and get money for it. People make websites. People do all kinds of stuff. I didn't say that was nonsense. That was highly technical and awesome. But, but are you with me yet? Now, I think sometimes we just need a little kickstart because what we do is we tend to attach and be like, oh, that must be Jesus. No, I didn't say it was Jesus. But what I'm saying is inside of you are all the answers that you need to currently get out of the situation. Why? Because the Bible says it. The Bible says that you're complete in Christ Jesus, lacking nothing. But you got to extract it. You and I got to extract it. Sometimes we need to sit down with somebody who's a little bit beyond and ahead of us in that situation so that they can help us to think through it just a little bit. Well, what could I do? What, what, the, what the heck can happen here? I mean, I don't, I don't currently have this or that or the other. Forget it. I mean, how did I learn eBay? I took a very big risk at the time and spent all that I had and, and basically shook my head the whole time to be coached in it and was like, I wasted my time. I wasted my money. What an idiot. Because that was all I could think about. And then I just stopped for a second. I heard one idea and, and I never talked to those people again, but I was on a roll. And we, we, we were on a roll. And, and do I currently still do it? I don't. Now I buy and sell domain names, which is another ridiculous thing. And I don't know what to say to you. All I know is it's time to get out of your mind. And it's time to get into the mind of Christ. Because God will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and he is waiting to use us. And I'll tell you what, I've had a lot of ideas come through my head, as my friends and people can tell you. But I'll tell you what, just because somebody comes up and makes, I mean, I'll tell you, when you're pushing forward to an idea, there's some failure that comes in, and sometimes there's a learning process, and you have every right, and sometimes you just want to quit because you think you're an idiot. But I'll tell you what, if you will grab onto the mind of Christ, it ain't finished. If it's still inside of you and God's still stirring something, it's still there. And I tell you what, I'm not giving up until I see the fruition of what God put in my heart. Why? Because the opinions of, of man are great and I appreciate wisdom, but I'm not after man's opinions. I'm after what God has ordained and the destiny and the steps that he's given to me for my life, as you should be as well, so that we can fully realize. They may laugh at you, they may scoff at you, but contained inside of that thing that God's been brewing is the future and the destiny that God has for your life. Let it go. Let it shine. But I don't, let, 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 let's sit down for just a minute and let's start getting creative on how and what and what things could happen, you know? I mean, there's so many different ways right now that they can. And, and the important part isn't to just have a list of a zillion ways. But for some of us, we don't even have one. We've got a little cloud and we just can't see anything. How many of you are like that? You know, you're just looking at how is that going to happen? I can't, I can't think of anything. I can't think of any way that that's going to get figured out. Are you with me or have I gone over? Yes, I have, of course. Of course I've gone over. All right. And this is, this is truth. This is, this is how we get to our destiny. This is how we do it. I started this church with a mind map. I did. I still have it to this day. I just brainstormed out all the things that we would need. It got it out of my head onto paper, and we just went after it. Now, God has done some things in the midst, and I'm still on the path of trusting him and following him to what he has in store. But I'm going to tell you what. I have never one time lost my passion or my purpose or my perspective because God called us as E3 Church to reach the city. Now, some, of, some could say and could criticize and be like, Brad, reach the city, really? I mean, is that, is that it? Yeah. 
shut up because that's 100% what he called me to do and called us to do. And I believe what's starting to take place is I had a good conversation with Ryan this, this week as we were just me and him in, in our Thursday night men's prayer. God's beginning to stir a passion. And this is the important thing. Let me, let me just do something here. As, as he is just, I mean, as a new believer, and Ryan is just passionate about seeing people reached with the gospel of Jesus. He just wants to get out. Let's get it done. Right, Ryan? I mean, let's, let's do this. Yeah. What, what the heck? This is a life-changing message. What are we doing just sitting, sitting around? And so we, we were able to kind of just talk about it because uh, some of us, you know, and I, I, I told him directly, you know, it's like, you know, knocking on, knocking door to door is a little bit, you know, I mean, I, I could come up with a thousand reasons, you know, and be like, well, well, we can't do that. We can't do this. We can't do this. We can't do that. But instead we said, well, what, what can we do? Ryan, you got passion. I'm with you, brother. Let's do this. What do we do? We, we know the internet works right now. We don't have to, we don't have to do it the way that it was done, we can do it a way that God's put on the inside of us, but we gotta follow those passions out so that we can become and we can do what God's called us to do. He didn't call, I'm sorry, he didn't say, Brad, I want you to build a monster you know, uh, edifice to me and just, I want it to be the coolest. He didn't give me that yet. All he told me was reach the city. And, and if that is something that you are passionate about, I will say as a church, our ethos about engaging the world with the love of God, all, all the things that I, I go over every week, but more than anything, I'm not interested in bringing believers from other churches so they can be like, you, you have really cool, no, that, that's cool, there's some great, awesome, incredible places to go in this city, and we're on the same team with those people, but first and foremost, we gotta reach the city. And that may mean that people won't come to church, that may mean that we throw more house parties at our house because we know they won't come. But what is important here is the fact that people get reached with the good news of Jesus Christ. That's it. I'm sorry, that, that's what I got. That, that and we, we're, we're gonna turn that page. We've been doing it in measure, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, we've been doing it and, and we are continuing to be a blessing in the lives of those in Haiti, continuing to be a blessing to the lives of those in Mexico, but it's time that we start engaging the community that we live in, and we start allowing ourselves to think with the mind of Christ on how we're going to engage them. We've been thinking religiously. You know how we are when I, when I tell you, hey guys, we're going to go evangelize the streets right now. How many of you just saw, you know, $10 bill tracks and, and you know, just scary things? A few of us might have. I, I have. But what if evangelizing Scottsdale looks different? What if we can utilize a form that's a little less evasive and say, hey, we just wanted to come by. We're a church in this area. We care about you and your family. A lot of people are going through economic hard times, stress, you know, marriages that are, here's a form. Listen, you can go directly to a page. It's anonymous. Just fill it out. All we care about is praying for you and your family. They come to that page. There's a video message and someone says, hey, we're interested. We love you. We care about you guys. We can do this all day long. There's nothing holding us back. It has no, nothing to do with resources. It has to do with the greatest source of life that lives on the inside of us. But in order for us to live in the destiny and the purpose that God's called us to, guess what? We've got to get moving. And if you're in the seat of the scornful right now and you've scorned this church or other churches or you've scorned these people or those people, listen, hang on. Don't get caught there. You're, what you're doing is getting to a position and posture that the enemy wants you in because he wants you to become a complainer because he knows if he can get you to complain long enough, then you won't do anything because you'll be too busy seated in the seat of the scornful. So get up. Let's take some action. Let's move forward. Let's take some advancements on it. Let's start to recognize that as we get in motion, then the emotion of the reality of who we are in Christ will seize our hearts. Sometimes you just gotta step out in the natural on the word of God and that's it. Sometimes you just gotta say, even when you don't feel it, even when you feel like everything's falling around, God is for me, not against me. God is for me, not against me until finally your face and your feet and your hands, they all get it. But that's what you do in order to put your energy and effort into getting out of your mind and getting into his, amen? Are you with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the reality of, of your word. We thank you that transformation takes place by the renewing of our mind. And God, this morning, the reality 
that you say in your word that we have the very mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Would you let that just begin to overflow into every portion, every area, our emotional life, our recreational life. Father, where we've been like, you know, how come that person never calls me? How come, you know, they seem to have friends with this person or that? How come they don't do that? Lord, the mind of Christ that would allow us to be, I'm gonna pick up the phone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna recognize it. I'm gonna go out of my way to be friendly and have friends. I'm not gonna wait for the phone to ring. I'm gonna go out and be a blessing. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna start thinking and, you know, sad for myself. Hey, hey, how come nobody's seeing this? I'm hurting, I'm going through this situation or this circumstance. God, would you help me to recognize that I can go be a blessing to somebody else? This morning, stir our hearts, stir our minds, Father, to come into an alignment with the reality of who you made us to be. Allow the compassion of Christ to well up on the inside of us and allow us to see people the way that you do. And Father, rather than being intimidated on how am I going to introduce this person to Jesus, would you let the creativity of your love and your grace and your mercy flow through us? Maybe we pay for somebody's lunch. Maybe we, we pay for someone's grocery. Maybe we just write a note and say, hey, I just wanted to know that, that I was thinking about you, and if there's ever anything that you need, I, 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 let me know, because because we, we can be there in a minute. Whatever it is, God, we desire to be used of you and to allow the supernatural life of God to begin to flow into every area of our lives. In Jesus' name, while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you're here today and you would say, Brad, I, I don't have a relationship with God. I, I don't know that he loves me. I don't know how valuable I am. In fact, I've been having thoughts and thinking the complete opposite. All I've been thinking about is how I'm worthless. I never do the right thing. I never say the right thing. Listen, man, the enemy, just the only thing he wants to do is get you to miss out on the fact that God loves you completely, has great things for your life. And real quick, if you're here and you'd raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me. And I want to have a relationship with Jesus. Would you lift your hand real quick and say, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. And also, if you're here this morning and you say, Man, it hasn't just been a week or the last few days, but the enemy's just been wreaking havoc on me. And I've been living in a house that I have created through negative words and every just ill thing. If that's you, and say, yeah, pray for me. I, 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 I got to bust through this thing. Would you lift your hand and say, that's me. Thank you. All right, we're going to end just praying this together. Everyone pray this out loud. Say, God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross and to, to be raised from the dead so that I could become a child of God. This morning, I accept that love. I accept that new life. I accept that grace and that mercy. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for helping and transforming the way I think, so that I can live worthy, because you made me worthy, that I can live loved, because you first loved me, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. All right, this morning.